I'm Jim Beck, a Houston area journalist and journalism teacher at New Caney High School. My students produce a cable television program. It's shot in advance, edited together, and then broadcast on cable. Live television is much different. Like your afternoon local and national news, you have a series of camera operators at different locations in a studio. Their cameras are all linked to a director. The director switches back and forth between cameras and sends the signal out into television land or onto the internet. I visited a Kingwood, Texas church, Shalom Hebraic Christian Congregation, that produces a television program for broadcast onto the internet and sat in on one of their training sessions. Rosalie Jerome serves as the director and producer of the program and she had a lot of comments for her camera crews. Um, I'm going to be giving you directions like uh, pan left, pan right. You can imagine is panning left is horizontal to the left, panning right to the right. Tilt up, tilt down, okay? You're moving the camera up and down, okay? Dolly forward is physically take the whole tripod and move it, the whole thing forward. Dolly back. Once again, Rosalie's job will be to communicate with the camera operators and coordinate shots between cameras. She will be operating a switcher that allows her to insert dissolves between cameras and impose titles and graphic images. The tricky part is that everything will be live and any mistake will be seen by the viewers. Camera operators must wear communication headphones that permit them to talk with Rosalie without disrupting the service. An often overlooked part of camera work is to make sure that when going from one camera to another that your colors match. That a red in one camera appears as a red in the other camera being switched to. Camera. Well, we have to get them as close as possible downstairs because my TriCaster has a way to calibrate all the colors together from all different cameras. The reason you want that is uh, so when it's switching from Joe wearing this uh, tannish type of a shirt with one camera, the other camera shows it bright white. It looks terrible when it goes to the other angle of his face or whatever. So we want that matching and uh, that takes time. So we need to be set up within an hour and I need an hour to make sure all of the cameras are calibrated. I, I, I will have you guys, want to grab the color bars? I will have you guys uh, be focusing all of your cameras and your positions on these color bars. The white balance also will take away the coolness of an inside light, the, the orange of the outside. No, the blue is outside and orange on the inside, right? What happens with the funky lights? Yeah. The white balance will make everything, this, the, it tells the cameras, this is what we call white. Okay, the whole idea with white balancing is you stand where the subject is that you're going to be videoing. You hold a white card and everybody checks to make, their, make the white the same on all the cameras. Okay, so what happens is when, when, you, when you white balance, you, you, you go all the way up. It's, you try to zoom all the way in so you get nothing but white. So I'm going to try nothing. But this is as far as in as, we, as I can zoom. Okay, and it has to where the white balance is on here. While each camera operator must do a white balance, adjustments to color must be made by Rose Lee at the switcher. See how they're a lot closer to each other? It's two. Which is two? But you have to look here. You have to look here. Okay. That's three. That's two. But we brought down the saturation a whole bunch on two, on three already. So we're going to boost two. So. We zero. have five minutes to be ready. You know, not, nobody has a perfect face. And so, you know, if you don't try to shoot to make somebody's face look as good as possible, you know, for example, somebody with a pointy nose, if, if you shoot them from the side, you're not doing them any favor. Yeah, so that's a, that, uh, um, people like it, I was saying with double chin, the same thing with photography, if people have, here's another thing, light. I mean, light is everything. If you have a frontal light, all the, all the lines and things like that on people's faces, they're, high, they're hidden because the light goes 
I mean, it, it washes them out. Rosalie positions her three cameras at the front of the auditorium and assigns each one a number. Well, if they're soft, if they're out of focus, that's a big problem. Uh, so I tell them to quickly calibrate their camera, like, um, you know, zoom into something beyond their subject. If their subject is moving, a still item, something beyond, just beyond them. And focus so it's nice and sharp, and then they pull back. And then it's set, Every, their depth of field, everything from what they were focusing on, like I told one person, one of the camera guys, focus on the plant just behind Reverend Ori. Get it nice and sharp, and then pull back. And then everything from that plant, which was just behind him, to his camera lens would stay in focus for the rest of the shoot. It's hard to kind of have an interesting shot as the wide middle shot. The more interesting shots, because you're hitting a head on with that wide shot, the more interesting shots are the ones from the angles. And um, those you always want to have looking room, like if I'm looking to the left here, you want to make sure that you don't have space this direction, you want to have space here. So uh, often I'll see my camera guys and I see all this empty space around their subject and, I, and I'll say to them, what are you trying to tell me here? I mean, I'm not getting it. Um, I liked today when Tim in camera three was uh, towards the end of the message, uh, Reverend Uri was getting more passionate. He was getting to the bottom line of the message. And what did Tim do to magnify it? He pulled in closer to an extreme close-up, almost cut off top of his head a bit, but that's allowed now if you watch TV. Uh, that's kind of the look right now. Donna, she was sitting next to me today learning uh, to run the audio, make sure the levels were right and also during the event and also um, put the titles in, make sure they fade in and out, put them when they're appropriate. Make sure not to put a title when the person's chin is right there that it cuts off their face. You only put a title when there's you know some room there. Um, sometimes there was a little bit of an opening in a corner of the frame and so I have this corner animation logo that we created and she would put that in nicely and it would just you know make that it was just like a little artist's touch, a little corner piece there. So getting different audience shots was important. Um, we had a lot of empty chairs tonight uh, because it's a Wednesday night. So I need extreme close-ups so we don't get the empty chairs. And obviously we want people, um, not head on, but you know, to the angle it looks more artistic. Uh, one or two or three, just some kind of a composition. Um, I get a lot of Bible, like in a church thing, we get. We didn't get that today, I forgot to remind him to do that. But just people looking down into their Bible, getting, um, um, we didn't have enough cable today for him to go back and go over the shoulder of some of the audience and then to the speaker. That's always a real interesting shot. If you watch TV, you watch the camera, good TV, you watch the camera angle, the camera shots changing every few minutes, every few moments and variety, and some artsy angles too, which you know we, we could have gotten into. Uh, the dance we had some fun with today. Um, there was just two dancers, which is kind of hard to capture because they're going in opposite directions and trying to get close up. So I had one camera focus on one girl. She was wearing this beautiful blue. And the other one, cam on the other one, the other girl, focusing on the other girl, um, which was P Fuchsia. And I told them, camera one, I said, uh, keep uh, the fuchsia person to the right of the frame. And I told camera three, keep the blue person to the left of the frame always. Follow them. And what I did is I switched so that both cameras were on at the same time and they were superimposed. It was really cool. And you see that a lot on concerts, live concerts on TV. We practiced some rack focusing. Tim had my husband. And this, uh, and uh, actually, Reverend Uri's wife, they were sitting next to one another. Judith and Mitch, just next to one another. And Tim had a, a profile of them, and rack focuses when right there while the camera's hot, he then takes the focus off of Mitch and moves it to Judith. You see that on drama. Camera crews must be familiar with their equipment. 
They should also handle their equipment gently and carefully. Like when moving a camera, hold the camera itself and not merely the tripod. Cameras have been known to fall off tripods and break. 